here is once again a very interesting little Juliet clock radio. As you can see, it does not have TV or weather bands. It's got this little cylindrical tuner, which I think is rather cute. Buy a couple of them like this. It's pretty neat. Check out how tall this thing is. It really does not do a whole lot of justice to just look at it. So we'll have a size comparison. This is a video 8 tape. Look at that. There's at least an inch from the tape to the top of the unit. In fact, it's about as tall if you factor in the snooze button. That's a video 8 tape. Why they needed to make it this tall, I'm not sure. Perhaps it's because it's a little bit more compact. I can't really tell. I don't think it really is, though. It's really not more compact than some of my clock radios are. I like the display. The display is very interesting. In fact, let me turn on the video light here and we'll see one of the reasons why I think it's interesting. There's a colon indicator on the display itself, but they chose not to use it. Instead, they chose to paint a colon onto the actual chassis of the clock radio itself, which is kind of a strange maneuver. I'm not real sure why they did that. See, it's also got square indications rather than round ones, which is rather interesting and unique, AM and PM indications. The switch down here is a hold switch. They actually point out what it is. Oh, it's a lock. They call it a lock switch. Focus. There we go. I think it's in the unlocked position right now. Yes. Both switches work. You can turn on a sleep timer. You'll see why I did that in a second. We'll point out uh, this thing's got a very major logical bug in its design. I've talked about this to some people. They already know what it is. No spoilers. We put that into lock, you can see we can't really change anything. There's a drowse button on the top. Other controls that it has. This is the weight control, that was one I just toggled there. And a dimmer, which is missing the knob. Fortunately, it is in the high dim position. If I really wanted to. I wonder if I could actually do that with this. I could probably change it to the low setting. I would work a little better with two hands. Nope, well, I got it in the low mode. It's really not much different than the high mode. So I wonder if I can do that. There we go. I don't know if you saw that. There really isn't much of a difference though, which could mean one of two things. Either there really wasn't much of a difference when it was brand new, or it's worn out, which is also certainly possible. It's not new anymore. There's your little tuner knob on the side here. Volume control. Band switch. There's nothing on the back except what looks like a vent. Is that actually a vent or is that just fake? It almost looks kind of fake. It might be a vent. But it looks like it's not. It looks like that is a fake vent. Which is kind of an odd thing to have. Apparently it has it. There's nothing on that side. And if we go ahead and have a look at the bottom, hopefully what I'll be inside upside down. Sold by Tops Electronics in Miami, Florida. But it's got a schematic. Look at that. It's not a very readable schematic, but it is a schematic nonetheless. And it gives us a transistor replacement chart, which is even cooler. Made in Hong Kong. Looks like it says Made in Hong Kong underneath it there. Juliet model number EL 1984. It could be 1884, but I get no results for that, so I'm going to assume it's a 1984. Frequency range uses 10 watts of power. There's a CSA certification sticker there, and the most curious thing of all, despite the presence of the schematic and the transistor replacement guide, it tells us that we shouldn't open it because there are no user serviceable parts inside. Well, the sticker that's underneath it begs to differ with you, so I'm not real sure who did that. Somebody did not do their one job and their research on that matter. 
All right, let's go ahead and have a listen to the radio. I'm not going to scare myself, so I'm going to turn that all the way down. I cannot remember if this unit has a functional radio or not. I suppose we'll find out. I think it's very dirty, though. Yes. Seems like it would work. I hear interference. I think I know where that's coming from. Hold on just a second. Well, that's an interesting turn of events. Not only did I just realize that it's an AM mode, but as you heard there, the interference is coming from this camcorder. So it's kind of interesting. Let's see if I could stay back from it. Sounds like the radio works, though. At least the AM broadcast band works. Somewhat. See if we get a station. Letters. It's just sort of a calculated random number. Well, the more information yeah. you give to your real estate agent, the better our agent. Well, and it the makes sense. Yeah, with absolute, the agent has the ability to negotiate. Right? Yeah. Quite the argument, eh? Yeah. I won't pick up much at this hour. Apologies for going wildly all over the place. I did not realize until just now that the image stabilizer was not on. I found the B channel. And that sounded like the B channel to me. There's quite a fair amount of interference going on right now, so I will not pick up too much. How about the FM band? Oh, I think I yeah, I remember now. The FM band is dead. Somewhere. There's a station coming in, trying to come in, no, not working. There's probably something wrong with the tuning capacitor or a connection in the unit itself. Well, anyway, whatever. So, what about that logic bug? No, well, set the alarm. We'll have a listen to the alarm, and we'll discover what that logic bug is. Okay, there's your alarm, after this thing was being thoroughly stupid about it. I don't know what it is with some of these things. But you set the wake time, and it apparently manages on its own to set a sleep time as well. And scares the living crap out of you because of the logic bug that this unit has. So what is the logic bug? Well, it set a sleep timer for some dumb reason. Which is not what I asked it to do. I think we figured it out. I don't know why it's doing that. There's another logic bug. There's something wrong with that. That's hilariously broken. Yeah, that's 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 not functional. Here's the biggest one. We'll turn that off. We'll try and turn that off. You can see I've got it in alarm mode here. <laughs> yeah. That wake switch applies not just to the alarm, and not just to the sleep timer, but also to the radio switch. So you get quite the nasty surprise, like I did when I first picked this unit up. Turn the radio on, and all of a sudden, 
not really what you were expecting to find. I thought that the unit had bad capacitors at first. I thought, wow, those filter capacitors are awful. Then I changed that switch and all of a sudden the radio came on. Really amazing stuff. But there you go. That is your kind of broken, but kind of interesting at the same time, Juliet EL1984 clock radio. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then. Here's a little lock. Go ahead and turn it off. I guess that's lock one. So turn the lock off. And I just found one of the very many little logical problems that this clock radio has. Or no, I didn't. Always make sure to check the settings of your buttons before scaring the living bejesus out of yourself. <laughs> Outtake. But I might just leave it in there because it's actually kind of funny. You can see something very interesting and strange that you would not normally see on something like this. Apparently my camera is in fog mode. There we go. I must have hit the side switch. Anyway, 